Jonathan King would blow up on the pace lap in the number 19 car, and that's a real disappointment for the discount tire team. They have not had the best of seasons. They're sitting around 60th in points, and this is not going to do them any good whatsoever. Christian Hartono sets the field into motion. Sam Curtis jumps down to make it three wide already, but Christian Hartono, the Indonesian rookie, got his first pull back in Calgary, and just two races later, now he's got his first oval pull. He's trying to hold off John Bunnell, who starts third on the inside line there in the 53, John Arndt with a good qualifying effort in the 05 Zaxby's machine. He was strong in Fontana. Let's see whether he can succeed again at another of the bigger ovals. Caitlin Sang right in the middle of things in a three-wide battle with Sam Curtis and P.J. Williams. Williams backs off quite a bit, and that stacks up the inside line pretty uh, well. Christian Hartono is going to lead the first lap. John Arndt back in the second round the outside of John Bunnell three wide behind him for position. Sam Curtis, Caitlin Sang, and John Bunnell is Bunnell all the way up to the outside near the wall. Being pushed up there by Thaber and here comes Arndt to the inside of the 24 going for the lead down the back straightaway. He'll probably need to clear by the time we hit turn three in order to take over the lead but he does so and Christian Hartona will lead only the first lap of this one before getting overtaken by Arndt. Let's see if Arndt can finally get that W he's been wanting ever since Brass Town Ball at the start of the year. Caution is out already at the end of lap number two. Three and four wide battling further back in the pack is King Ray. Slices to the outside of the 01 car, tries to get in behind him into turn number three, but Legacy got off the gas, I think a little earlier than King Ray was expecting. King Ray into the side of the 01 and both of them into the wall. A surprisingly little amount of damage for the 03 considering the hard hit he just took. I think... Uh, and TV will be able to continue, as will, of course, Al Legacy. Luckily enough, those guys were trapped at the top of the track, and everyone was able to get by before King Ray slid down the racetrack. Drivers trying to sort themselves out under caution, and they were still four wide. To Max, just barely in Ingrits, that's enough to send him around, and Nick Guerra spins out a little bit further back after contact with Daniel Boyles as well. I don't think there was anything intentional under that, just uh, nowhere to go. It's drivers slowed down for that caution flag. Henrietta Fitzwater down the pit lane under this caution as were Al Lagasy, John Gambit, and of course Antivia Kingray under the caution. We're not going to, these guys aren't going to be able to make it the rest of the way under a, a fuel strat from here so that's why we didn't see more of the field come down. John Arndt leads him back to the flag. Didn't get the best of restarts though. Christian Hartono already peeking up the inside of the number 05. Can't get the move done. The 05 moves back down into the line, but the 900 shoving his nose to the bottom of the 24. Got Caitlin Sang already. Trying to slip into second here behind Arndt, but that's going to be a bit of a struggle. Jake Baskinger, as always, battling for a position inside the top five. How about Carl and Dumian in the one slipping into the mix in the Velvet Works Racing? John Arndt is going to lead the first lap back under green. Christian Hartono is going to slip into second as Thaber with a poor run off the corner. He's number four. And that's going to leave Sang back into the podium. Chris Dodd in the 88A trying to slide his way into Mifuni Sanjuro's DMs. Gets by Michael Harvey there who is way to the outside in that corner out of the rip and maybe into the marbles there but Chris Dodd he's a kind of outside shot at the championship right now and with DJ Curtis's moderately poor position in race number one finishing 21st he's got a shot along with several others in this race of making some serious gains and headway towards Curtis on that championship effort. Zayden Davidson running right behind Jeffrey Fingai, and he has some sort of problem. Might be an electrical issue under the hood of the number nine as he slows to the inside. Oh, that was close with Jones and Bejenov. Bejenov might have actually got into the side of him a little bit. We'll have to take a, a look at that. But that's the second time a driver right behind Jeffrey Fingai has uh, suffered a mechanical failure today. That's a, Well, it seems like he's passing his luck off on others today, and so far the 92 remains out there on the track. On board, Demir Bejanov, who had a very poor effort in Fontana after a violent crash early on in the race. He 
just barely makes some contact with the, the number nine there. You can see his uh, right fender is bowed out a little bit. How about Daniel Foyles making it, making several passes on the far outside line? It was a bit of a miracle that they were able to get through that uh, as good as they did. A little bit more damage for the right side of Beijing off here as he got clipped by Al Lagasse going into that corner. They keep it going and, and Demir actually made a pass through that, but that is not good for the championship contender. The Kazakhan number 13 has got some work ahead of him if he's going to gain some points on DJ Curtis. John R. not really able to pull away. Caitlin Sang has slipped into second. Christian Hartono, I think, got caught out by Caitlin Sang's run into turn number one. Jake Baskinger all over the side of the number 24 got into him there, but they keep it going in a straight line. P.J. Williams going for a pass as the rest of the pack now catches up to this group. Tyler Thaber's having another go on the inside. That's, it's going to be so hard to make moves on the bottom. Just the, the way the turn they set up for turn number three with that kink there makes uh, the outside the preferred way around the track. And Caitlin Sang is going to hold on to second for now it looks like. John Arndt Pulls away by a couple of car lengths. And yes, Sang does slip back in front of the 900 as he had to brake a little bit harder than Sang going into turn number one. These drivers going to stay nice and close at this racetrack. It's quick enough that they have to get off the throttle, but not a whole lot more than that. Not quite as fast as Fontana, but still some pack-esque racing here at this 1.72 mile Autodromo San Lucas. Chris Dodd going to take advantage of some very hard drives by P.J. Williams and Carl Dumian into the corner to snap away two spots there. He's got drafting help from the 10 of Jake Baskinger. Can he get back to the, the middle or the outside lines by the time we hit turn three in order to sweep out in front? Yes, he can. Baskinger going on a pass, but he can't get it done on that inside, and he loses several positions and uh, falls back into line pretty much where he started the lap. Michael Harvey and Nick Pericles also making some charges to the front. Those are some other championship contenders of note. But uh, Chris Dodd now is trying to track down John Funnel to get himself maybe into the top five. Caitlin Sang trying to snap that lead away from the 05 of John Arndt. He's up the inside through turn number two, but Hartono's all over him as well. He might be looking to make this three wide down the back straight. Slips into the line behind the 07 for now. Can Caitlin Sang make the move on the inside? It's going to take a big dive by the 07. She's still up the inside of the 05. That's better than a lot of the runs we've seen today from these drivers. Can Caitlin Sang stay to the inside by the time we hit turn one? That's probably your best shot at gaining a position. No, John Arndt too strong on that outside. He's got some power under the hood of that chicken machine today. Tyler Faber in the game vault, number 900, again trying up the inside it's it's quite tricky to pass here it seems like especially for the lead as Christian Hartono now tries to push the 900 to the bottom of the track Chris Dodd Sanjuro oh we got some contact behind him Dodd's into the wall Sanjuro back there as well and I think we've got bigger trouble on our hands as Dodd has tried to get down to the pit lane the tight nature of the pack left very little margin for error Sanjuro flipped the back of the 88 heading into the corner he got into the wall pretty hard. Now he's trying to get down to the pit lane. Gambit and all the others are checking up, but that leads to a big stack up accident. Dodd spins into the pit lane. Curtis into the end of the pit wall there. And Jones, oh my goodness. Jones T-bones Curtis there. As we've got a car upside down further back as well. Some drivers were more on the brakes than others. Jake Baskinger gets turned around by Nick Pericles. Joking left and in around as well. And Aiden Shepard comes flying in and punts Daniel Voiles into Baskinger. That's going to pop him up in the air onto the 666 before coming to rest on the back end of Aiden Shepard's uh, number 14 car. Yet another terrible crash for Aiden Shepard. And, and that's a really strange one by Jake Baskinger. That wasn't the only hard hit Daniel Voiles took after getting spun around by Shrimp Engritz. He gets mowed down by Wes Jones, and that was what sent Jones flying into the number 66 there. On board, Wes Jones. Now, he must have come into contact with some oil because he could not get that car slowed down nearly enough, and that is a tough, tough hit for the 66 as well as the 404 there. They 
come to a stop instantly, and I hope they're both all right. One more on board. This time it's John Gambit, who had probably the closest call of any driver. The view from turn four. Even after taking the caution, they weren't quite done wrecking as Sukuli gets squeezed between McGovern and Henrietta Fitzwater. They get together and Fitzwater and Sukuli in particular with a hard hit into the wall and Bejenov and Al Agassi add to their damage totals just uh, a little bit further, just for good measure. After a brief cleanup, the entire field came down the pit lane to take on tires and fuel up for what should be the only mandatory pit stop this race. Jones, Shepard, Boyles, Curtis, Baskinger, Dodd, and Sikuli all out of the race from the most recent incidents. John Arndt with a very strong pit stop to maintain the lead. Caitlin Sang still in second, but Christian Hartono falls all the way back to 17th or 18th after the team had some problems with the jack. Lucas Knight now inside the podium. The 8 and the 07 have some history out on the racetrack. It has been positive though. They haven't gotten into any trouble, but Probably one of the best rivalries of the season, but Faber into the eight car, and they're wrecking again back in turn number three. Several cars involved back there as John Arndt's going to come to the line to take the caution yet again. Faber caught out a little bit by the eight, checking up into the corner, and around they went. Christian Hartono, Nick Pericles, and Bejenov all involved three of the big championship contenders took three different lines into that accident, and all of them are going to go out of the race from this accident. I'll tell you what, it sure has been an eventful one for the Kazakh racer. He tried to slip through on the inside on that one, but the hole closed up just at the wrong time, and that will be it for the number 13 car. How about Al Lagasy avoiding another one just barely? One more look at the accident from midway between turns three and four. Good avoidance by a lot of the drivers at the tail end of the field to get to the apron. They were more on it than they were uh, a lot of the drivers were the last time around. A lot of big names caught out in that one. Demir Bejenov, John Gambit, Faber, Hartono, Knight, and Sanjuro all out of the race. Notably, though, Nick Pericles stays in it. Only 27 cars in this race, so Pericles might have a shot at getting some points on Curtis nonetheless. But how about Sang up the inside of John Arndt on the restart? This could be a really critical opportunity for Sang to get the pass done on John Arndt, who's been so good once we get going uh, on a longer run. Just seems to have a lot of power under the hood of that 05, but he... Sang had some help from the 44, who's now going for the lead himself. Can Jim Gambit make it work on the inside? It's been very difficult to, but he's alongside the 07, still exiting the corner. But John Arndt pushing the 07 a little bit. He's been so strong today, and that might be enough to get Sang to the race lead. And that is enough. Jim Gambit pushes the 05 up the track in turn number one. He sent it in hard, but that's going to leave Caitlin Sang with several car lengths advantage, heading on to the back straight. Some new drivers now inside the top five and ten. How about Scott Roush in the 696 up inside the top four, racing alongside John Arndt and Estavis Cortez after her impressive run back at Fontana now inside the fray as well. Matt McIntyre and James Shelley there as well. James Shelley ha lost some positions from qualifying after being penalized for his incident back in Fontana, but now he finds himself up there. How about Jeffrey Finguy in the Ruby Machine? Now inside the top 10, a rare uh, sight for him, I'm sure, as John Arndt is going to get the spot back from the 44. Jim Gambit sent it in way too hard into turn one yet again, and this time Arndt was able to capitalize rather than getting shoved up into the marbles himself. Carl Dumian might try to sweep into third in the number one car, but isn't quite able to do so. We've got more contact, but they managed to save it, I think. That was a very close call between Finn Guy and Michael Harvey. We saw the debris in the previous camera shot. Harvey's going to continue on. I'm not sure whether that will affect the arrow on that number 72 machine or, uh, or whether or not that will hinder the 92 in any way or make him uh, a little bit more likely to have a mechanical fa failure. But I guess only time will tell. Mark Hankins all the way up at the wall. 
using the, the Larson line as Finn Guy is now in battle with James Shelley and John Bunnell, who nearly made some contact out of turn number two there. John Art to the inside of the 07 into turn three. Jim Gamut sent it even lower, but neither of them are going to get the move to sick. Scott Rouse says, thank you very much. I'll take third. Matt McIntyre and Carlin Dumian still going at it for fifth place. How about Scott Rouse? He's trying to carry that momentum that he got back there in turn number four to slip into second behind Caitlin Sang now. And he's going to get the move to stick in the Durex machine on the inside. He's got a run up on the 07 as well. What a drive by Scott Rouse to get up to this point. Jim Gambit and Sang now racing for third and Scott Roush going for a move on the inside into turn three. Oh, the wrecking behind him. That's Art and Gambit, two of the strongest cars of the day involved in that one. Who's going to win the race back to the caution flag? Scott Roush really gave it his best shot through turn four there, but Sang's going to hold on. Turn three has been catching out drivers all weekend and yet again, it's a case of Gambit getting on the brakes a little bit more than Endumian was expecting. Endumian gets into the 44 and that collects John Arndt as well. Possibly the winning car will no longer have a chance at a top 10 I don't think unless his crew can do some major repairs to that machine. All the other drivers at the back of the field luckily have lots of time to slow down and avoid that one. Under the cooldown lap, Shelley and Fitzwater Sr. get together, and that's a huge hit. Front impact to the 59, and he will come to a screeching halt in turn number one. We'll have to take another look at that to see whose fault that was on, especially considering James Shelley had a penalty entering this event. On board Shelley here, this might tell the tale. And yeah, the 59 was turning in, the 12 came down the track, and I'm not sure whether or not there was anything going on between those two, or, or whether that was just a little bit of carelessness on James Shelley's part, like last time at Fontana, but that might be something for the stewards to look at. A clutch issue is going to take Eugene DeMax out of the race. That car had already seen better days, but uh, DeMax not even going to have a chance at finishing this one. Shelley, Jim Gambit, and Zachary Fitzwater Sr. add to the list of drivers out of the race. That's especially unfortunate for Fitzwater Sr., who up until this point had no DNS on the air. That means that only Max Anderson and John Arndt, who's just barely hanging on at the tail end of the field, uh, are the only drivers remaining with no DNF so far. Estavis Cortez with an electrical issue on the restart. She's going to bring that car to a near halt on the front straight, but they're going to be able to coast that car to the inside using the banking back there to keep this race under green flag conditions. But Scott Roush up the inside of Caitlin Sang. Sang had a little bit of trouble and an uncharacteristic mistake there by Sang to leave the door open by Roush. is going to allow uh, the 696 to take over the race lead. Matt McIntyre in the 58 up into second as well as Caitlin Sang is now trying to hold off Prudence Littlejohn for that final podium spot. How about Sidney Crasta now inside the top five and 21 machine? There's been some pretty high attrition, especially amongst the front runners. So uh, the, the group that we now see in the top 10 is almost completely different than what we saw earlier on in this race. Roush pulling away from Matt McIntyre so far. I think Caitlin Sang's got a, the stronger car. And she's already trying to get that second spot back from the 58 car. Kaloa Hankins racing in ninth right now. Tries to slide up the racetrack in front of Michael Harvey. But Harvey had a big head of steam coming off of turn number four. That caught out Hankins. And uh, Hankins goes for a quick little spin. PJ Williams also collected. He had nowhere to go in that one and took a, a bit of a lick to the inside wall. Both of these drivers will keep going though. Scott Roush takes the restart. 44 laps down, 20 to go for the 696 machine. Almost half of this race at this point has been run under caution. Let's see if we can get some green flag laps in, especially to end this one. Matt McIntyre in the Oreos machine, looking at the inside of the 696. He's going for that lead, and he's got the help, the drafting help from Caitlin Sang and Sydney Crasta right behind him. Sang is going for a run on her own there on the inside. Can't make the move stick. And how about Scott Roush? Just inches from the wall on the outside, sticking with the lead. For now, Matt McIntyre's all over him. 
and Sydney Kress and now finds herself inside the podium. Prudence Littlejohn in the 31 has made her way up to the front where it counts. And how about Jeffrey Finguy? A rare top five appearance for him as he slides up the racetrack nearly into the side of the 31 and the 21. And Matt McIntyre, Brown the 696, as he shoved the 696 to the outside line in turns one and two. And Roush is going to lose around eight spots this lap. What a terrible run for him as he gets into the side of the 53 they keep it going in a straight line and get corrected in time to avoid becoming the third group uh, in the top five to uh, slam into that turn three wall how about William Brock in the number four now making his way up to the front Scott Rose trying to squeeze his way down underneath the 53 bumps the four down to the bottom of the track it's go time now that we're inside the top uh, the last 20 laps Mark Hankins in the seven trying to gain some positions in the final few laps to to make more of a championship bid Sydney Crasta racing with uh, with the leader of uh, of the 58 a little bit further up Scott Roche continuing to make some dodgy maneuvers there gets into the right side of the 31 and Prudence Littlejohn and that's going to set him very poorly for turns one and two he loses a couple of spots to William Brock, who is beginning to really slice his way into the top five now. And Mark Hankins up another spot as well. William Brock is driving it like he's stolen it. Now he's three wide with Prudence Little John and Jeffrey Fingai. He's got some momentum with some help from Mark Hankins. He's up the inside of the 92 even still. And he gets in front of the 31. And Prudence Little John slips into fourth. Now going after a podium spot from Jeffrey Fingai. Fingai sends it in hard, but Brock, with much less distance to cover on the bottom of the track, he will slip into third, and now he's only got two cars in front of him. Sidney Krasta in the 21, and the 58 of Matt McIntyre, and they're racing for position in front of him. This might give him a shot at getting up towards them. He, he slides down to the bottom, trying to help Sidney Krasta make a charge at the 58, because if he can do that, he might be able to push it three wide, or follow Krasta through but McIntyre holds on for now Brock taking a look to the outside of the 21 squeezing really up to the outside of the 21 but slides in right behind the 21's back bumper and Prudence Littlejohn still looking for that spot to try and get third place back can't make a good run at it for now and Sidney Krasta with another big run up on Matt McIntyre heading towards turn number three now Mark Hankins making it three wide for position William Brock pushes the 58 around the outside of the 21 and now he's in second behind only Matt McIntyre and he's got a good run off the corner can he get to McIntyre's inside by the time we hit turn one Matt man what a run he's got on the 58 the power that that four car is only comparable to the power that we saw out of the 05 car earlier on this race and he goes from fifth to first in just two laps William Brock is going to be one hard man to pass in these final laps Mark Hankins just went by Jeffrey Fingai to get into the top five and considering he's now nearly in the top five in points this could be yet another great performance that that seven team has been looking for he's up the inside of Matt McIntyre but he clips the back end of the 31 of Prudence Littlejohn and he's crashed that car hard in turn number three he'll be going to the garage Al Lagasse going to the garage after everything that he's gone through he had nowhere to go to avoid getting into Hankins pretty heavily there and Michael Harvey is also heavily damaged in the 72 car he's gonna stay out there surprisingly although he seems to be having a little bit trouble uh, handling that machine ever since his very similar crash John Arndt has just been kinda chilling out running around 15th place or so and he managed to get down to the apron to avoid that crash however when he merged back onto the racetrack something went wrong under the hood of that number 05 car and he will retire from the race. He was one of the other drivers, like Zachary Fitzwater Sr., that did not have a DNF on the year up until this point. Michael Harvey did manage to get that car fixed. He's back out on the track, and that leaves 20 cars remaining on the racetrack. Estavis Cortez, the only one of those, a lap down. They managed to get that electrical issue on his car fixed, and in his home race, he will remain out there on the racetrack, albeit three laps down. I'm sure he's just out there... Uh, have a good time and if they wreck again like we've seen so many times he'll gain 
yet more positions on the racetrack. William Brock takes the restart. Just eight laps to go now for the driver, the number four DeWalt machine. He's got Sidney Crassa and Matt McIntyre racing hard behind him. That's what he wants to see. Brock has appeared really strong, but Sidney Crasta has been right with him for a lot of the laps preceding the caution. Crasta nearly slides up into the four there, and here comes Jeffrey Fingai going for what could be his first win since 2014, trying to snap second away from the Dollar General. Number 21 can't quite get the move done, although Crasta goes all the way up the track. Prudence Little John nearly into the wall, and Caitlin Sang is in the wall in the 07, maybe struggling a little bit on those cold tires. But William Brock has gapped those other two drivers by around five car lengths now. Can he hold on? That's a big disappointment for Caitlin Sang, who entered this weekend third in points and was looking to have a top 10 within her grasp. That damage sent her well back in the field. She's now out of contention for the top 10, and that car doesn't seem to be handling that well. She's kind of stuck around some of the other heavily damaged cars, like Nick Guerra, Shrimp Engritz, and Antivia Kingray. Battle still on for that second spot, coming to four laps to go this time, and Scott Roush made it three wide down into turn three. He could not carry that momentum through the corner, and Sydney Crasta has got a big push from the 58. I think she's going to be able to re-clear the number 92. 58 peaking down low. He, he might try and go for a move on Sydney Crasta just as fast as he can get around Jeffrey Fingai, which he does just barely entering the corner, and here comes the 58. Going for second, John Bunnell now attacking Jeffrey Fingai, and how about a Stavis Cortez? He may be three laps down, but he's sure putting on a show for his home crowd, racing with uh, some of the leaders, just as he was right before the mechanical, sort of the electrical failure earlier or on, where when uh, he was about to restart the race in fourth spot. Just three laps to go now, and these guys really need to team up if they're going to go after William Brock. They just can't make any headway on that number four. He's just far too strong, despite the drafting uh, advantage that the drivers behind him have. And how about Sidney Crasta holding on to the second spot on the top line through turns one and two to stay in front of the 58 and maybe have another go at the four. Sidney Crasta up at the top side of the track through turns one and two. I think she was trying to stick with her drafting partner, Matt McIntyre, in the 58. But that has left the door open for the 92 of Jeffrey Fingai, who had a great run onto the back straight, isn't quite able to clear the 21 nonetheless into turn number three. That was probably his best shot yet. He's still challenging on the inside, but Sidney Crasta, like she was shot out of a rocket, is going to go back by the 92 before we hit the start-finish line to begin the final lap of the race, lap number 64. Does Sidney Crasta have anything left? for the number four DeWalt machine of Brock in this last mile and a half or so. It doesn't look like she does. Brock extends his advantage coming onto the back straight, and it's been such an attrition-filled weekend here at Autodromo San Lucas. 40 of the 84 starters in the weekend's races have fallen out, either due to wrecks or to various mechanical gremlins. But William Brock started this race outside of the top 20, survived the early carnage, and when it came down to it, in the final 10 to 15 laps, he made a brilliant charge from 8th to 1st, and he will get his second victory of his career. That's his second win of the season as well, and his second at tracks larger than a mile and a half. He's really got to enjoy coming to these big ovals, and he is most undoubtedly the most improved driver from the 2016 USA campaign where he came last in points of the drivers to compete in every event. He's focused on consistency in the early stages of this year and that's given him the experience to go out and challenge for more and more victories. He won his first race back in Motegi after a similar charge through the field and here in Mexico, he will head to victory lane once again. He now sits within the top 10 in points as well, so maybe he could contend for the championship just yet. So close, yet so far for Sydney Crasta. It's her best run of the year, but she comes just a little bit short of that first career victory that she's still going for after starting her career back in 2015. She's tied with Bill Littlejohn and Tristan Wilhoyt for the most starts without a win. Jeffrey Fingai, who hasn't won since 2014, 
his best run of the year as well in third spot. What a charge there at the end of the race. Managed to survive so much carnage. And everyone behind him seemed to have mechanical gremlins, but uh, Finn Geig's got to be happy with that third place finish. It's uh, a great turnaround for him. Prudence Littlejohn finishes fourth in the 31. That's great for her championship effort. She moves to the top five in points, I believe. John Bunnell finishes fifth in the 53. Scott Roush comes across the line in sixth place. He's led some laps. Matt McIntyre was strong all day in seventh. Carl and Dumian eighth in the number one. Car uh, Colin McGovern finishes ninth in the number 42. And Hawaiian Koloa Hankins in one of her closest races to, uh, to her home state will come across the line in tenth. No real surprise up at the front of the point standings. DJ Curtis holds on to a commanding point lead. He couldn't have lost the points lead coming into this race. He had that big of a lead coming in. He has lost a small amount of his advantage, but courtesy of the fact that he at least finished his race, it will not be too critical of a hit to his championship hopes. Matthew Engelram in the 47, up to second place in points. He's now the top running rookie contender. Caitlin Sang continues on in third place. It could have gone a lot better had she not hit the wall with less than 10 laps to go, falling to 13th after being in the top five for most of the race. Skyla Johnson falls to fourth in points, and Prudence Littlejohn up five spots to into the top five in points. If she can continue these kind of runs, she might just yet be able to defend her Heart Canada title with a Heart Pro Series title. Michael Harvey, Hurricane Harvey, got caught out in a wreck late in race number two and falls to sixth in points as a result. William Brock jumps all the way up to seventh in points while Demir Bejenov continues to fall through the standings. He's now eighth. Chris Dodd still inside the top ten along with Mark Hankins. At the bottom of the standings, Tony Tavolaris holds on tight to that dunce cap. He's 46 points behind his nearest rival, uh, Daniel Voiles, and he's now the first driver to go out of championship contention. Next time out, Hark makes its first visit to the ISM Raceway, formerly known as Phoenix International Raceway, back when it made its bid to be the last speedway on the 2017 schedule.